Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. I'm back with one of these critique videos for you. So essentially this is an informal analysis. I'm going to break down stuff that's happening in the video. I'm going to be pausing and talking about the concepts here. So if you're just looking for the original video or someone who doesn't really re react to it or say anything, this probably isn't for you. If on the other hand you maybe like to learn something, get some insights, then buckle in. If you want to see more of this kind of thing, do the old subscribe and enable all notifications thing. If you like it, please do consider letting me know with a like and a comment. You guys have been great at doing that stuff so far, so just want to say I really appreciate it. And on the flip side, if you hate it, feel more than free to hit dislike, but if you can let me know what you don't like, I can take it on board and maybe try to do something about it. So this one was a suggestion, this is Freedom by Bandmade, more than open to suggestions, so as I say, just fire them down there if you've got any. I haven't heard this song before, I believe this is the live version. I've popped the video here forward a few seconds because it started off with a blank screen. And then you'd just be stuck looking at me in a black screen and let's face it, no one wants to be doing that. Like I say, I've done this with other bandmade songs before, which you can check with the eye up there. But far too much for me as per usual, let's get into it. Again, this is slightly unexpected. It is is a slightly different experience with every song, isn't it? You know, the, the handful that I've listened to so far. Oh, before before I forget, this was a suggestion that I, I go through chronologically through their entire back catalogue of what a hundred plus songs. So if that's something you'd like to see me attempt to do, then hit me up in the comments. This is cool. We've got an almost kind of eighties kind of hair metal esque uh, riff going on, and this re really cool kind of crowd chant. So the crowd are essentially doing a kind of gang vocal, which I don't know if that's on the original recording or not, but it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on here. So in terms of the composition, it's a good thing to do because you've got this nice kind of solid thing. And in terms of being a live band, it's a great thing to do as well. You give your audience something to latch onto that's nice and simple and everyone kind of feels like they're part of it. This is really cool what's happened uh, dynamically, so I think the rhythm guitar is cut out this time and the lead guitar, I think they normally have lead guitar on the right, so I'm assuming they've done the same here, playing the riff but it's a lot quieter in the mix, so you're really getting the drums, the bass and the vocals as the main focus here. And what this means is when it goes to a different section the guitars kick in, it's going to be much more big and powerful again. The thing I really like to do as well, uh, the, the harmonies with the vocals, the backing vocals aren't just thirds, and as nice as thirds are, they can be a bit bored. They tend to do kind of, uh, I think that was a fourth there, it's potentially a fifth. A fourth and a fifth are sort of the same thing. If you imagine like this is a note here, right? A fourth is basically here, and a fifth is here. So it's the same note, one an octave lower, one an octave higher, so it's sometimes difficult to discern exactly which one it is. That's my excuse anyway, <laughs> and I'm sticking to it. So you probably felt that there this extra like burst of energy when it came into the chorus. It's not just uh, them putting themselves into the music, which is part of it. It's the dynamics, it's the orchestration and the arrangement of the piece. When the guitars have dropped out or they're very quiet, then they come back in with more volume. And they do that quite a bit as well, that trick where they'll do, we call it unison, they're kind of playing on the same beat. I think the rhythm there was like, do, 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 do. I'll need to, I'll need to listen to it again. In fact, let's just pop it back and find out. Yeah, so it was fairly close. The rhythm was do, 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 do. So you have everything doing that. It makes it kind of punch. And then you go into your different section. It's almost, um... It almost feels a bit like putting uh, an exclamation mark or sort of some sort of punctuation at the end of the sentence or indeed the end of a paragraph so that you kind of know as a, a reader or listener in my oddly complex and not very good metaphor <laughs> that there's a new section coming up.
Good singing as well from the, the rhythm player there. Yeah, nice stuff. So I have been told in the comments that they quite often stand in the drum riser and try to distract the drummer by making stupid faces. I wonder if that's what's happened going on there because the drummer looked like she uh, retorted there with a stupid face of her own. Cool. Yeah, there's this slight, um, I wasn't too sure if this has happened before, but I think it did. There's a slight hesitation before the chorus as well, so the instruments are dropping out. I think the drums were still going, but the, the guitars and the bass were more or less off there. And again, this is almost um, to completely abandon my somewhat poorly constructed, but hopefully understandable <laughs> punctuation metaphor. This, but this technique's almost like you kind of take a breath in before doing something or anything. You know, like if you're on a roller coaster and it gets to the top and you kind of take that <sighs> breath before it plunges down and that's the kind of exciting bit happens. Again, it's a great compositional tool to kind of uh, like uh, help you anticipate that something's going to kick off. It's, a, it's also as well as the harmonies being on point, they're just really nicely mixed. So you can hear this extra layer of vocal coming in. Sometimes it's louder when it needs to be, sometimes it's quieter just to kind of reinforce it. Brilliant. Cool. I was loath to pause it during that because that was just really fun to listen to. It's, it's, it's the same with all these videos I'm watching. It just looks like they're having a ball doing it. The drum solo should start off with the kick drum. So that's that kind of booming sound. It lets everyone know kind of what the tempo is. It gives you something to latch onto. It's a bit like there was a song I looked at when they did a bass solo and the drums and the bass kind of did this bomb bomb thing together to give you like a nice sense of where it is. Uh, and then she's kind of doing fills over the top of that and then just kind of going off on one, maintaining the same the same speed obviously she's not speeding up which is what you need you want your drummer to maintain the same tempo then adding in kind of cool stuff with the toms and syncopation to make it a bit more interesting i'd say what this band are really good at doing is keeping the, the solos kind of short and sweet so i'd almost think of them as like elongated fills rather than a solo because it doesn't feel like this kind of sometimes solos get a bit um it sometimes feels like they get a bit self-indulgent and a bit verbose. Not all the time. You can you get people that can take up like 15 minutes and it's just beautiful music. But a lot of the time you can kind of maybe outstay your welcome. I think what they've really nailed as a band, and probably in their songwriting in general, particularly with the kind of small bridges they do, is like leave people wanting more. So rather than having like this huge kind of sprawling epic, you know, you chop it down a bit to something that's a lot more digestible. And once you finish listening to it, you kind of want to go back and listen to it again rather than be like, oh, I've, I've had enough of that. So I wonder if that's like a, an aesthetic or even like a perhaps sort of a philosophical choice or outlook that they have. Cool. So this is nice. This is this is by far not the most uh, technically demanding solo that I've seen her do. But what is cool is uh, she's not fret gazing, which is a difficult thing to do. But if you're playing something technically demanding, you sometimes want to check your hands are doing what they're supposed to be doing. But that does mean you can't engage with the audience in the way she's doing here. So she's playing the more melodic lines and able to look up. And when you're doing the kind of uh, legato stuff, if it's just kind of hammer-ons and pull-offs and you're in one position, you can still kind of look up and do stuff. So it's really nice that that's kind of incorporated to this as well and i don't know if it's a conscious thing where she thought oh i'd like to be able to look at people when i'm doing this solo or if it's just it fit the song and that's what works and this is just a nice uh, kind of unforeseen bonus it'd be really interesting to get a like kind of heavy insight into how 
they construct their songs and what they're thinking when they do them. I understand from the, the comments you guys have left that they kind of almost have like a chain of command where it kind of an idea starts off here and gets sent to the next person, to the next person, and they all kind of do stuff on it together. But it'd be cool to get some sort of um, insight into that. So if you know if they've done any kind of documentaries or kind of song deconstruction things, then leave it below. It'd be cool to check that out. <laughs> So now, ah, it's just full of great compositional kind of ideas, particularly dynamically. So here we've gone to like a section that we've had before, but instead of everything being big, you've gone down to the vocals and just the kick drum. So the kick drum's keeping this kind of pounding beat. It's a great opportunity to kind of clap along if you're in the audience. And it's just given this fantastic sense of building. So my, my gut feeling here as a musician is they're going to go through this once. There might even be a pause or a, a kind of big drum fill that everyone's just going to kind of lump in together. So I'm already anticipating this. Well, unless they throw me a curveball, which they might do. <laughs> Okay, this is cool. What they've done here is rather than just go with the drums and the vocals by themselves, they brought the guitars in doing some nice palm muting. So palm muting is a dynamic technique. It's exactly what it sounds like. You take your palm, you rest against the strings, you get a much more muted sound. They had that kind of coming in, and then I was thinking, oh, they're going to do some sort of pause, but I think they're going to do some stabs here. I'm just going to pop it back a second so I can fully, uh, fully appreciate it. this nice unison thing that we kind of talked about before the de, 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 and then bam into it that was a nice bit of editing as though as well there's a testament to the the camera work they're really good at kind of showing you what they want you to focus on so there's a little bass fill there that i, I hadn't picked up on before as i say it's quite like harmonically dense there's quite a lot going on here the sort of music, I think this is, this is a comment that's popped up quite a bit as well. You can listen to it a lot and get get more from it if you do listen to it, if you, you know, every time you listen to it, what you call kind of conscious listening. So you might listen to the bass one time, you might just listen to the hi-hat another time. Yeah, really good stuff. So at this point, this is what I've come to expect, is it's just really nice, tight, polished. I think there's a comment a while back that said, well-oiled machine, and I was like, yeah, that's that's the phrase that I'm looking for. More of the same. Really cool, so there's a lot of stuff we could look at there, a lot of concepts we could break down, so let's have a look at that. Right, so I'm going to break down the bass part first of all. There's this I didn't pick this up on uh, the first time listening to it. This is always the value of going back and listening to things again. There's these really lovely bass chords. Uh, I thought there was just a kick drummer who wasn't listening closely enough un underneath that bridge section, which is what I'm going to focus on for the, the entirety of this kind of breakdown. And th if you just play kind of uh, two or three notes uh, for bass chords, you can get a really nice sound. I'm assuming she's playing them on the higher strings. I couldn't see because the, the video wasn't on her. Uh, if you play chords on the higher strings because they're thinner, you tend to get a bit more clarity and then when you play chords on the lower strings they can be a bit muddy. There's ways around it, but generally it's easier to just play little chords up here. I, I opted to use my fingers because it's a bit of a softer sound than strumming it, but she might very well be using the pick. 
But what you've got here is really high up on the fretboard for a bass. We're up at the 15th fret on this second string here and up the 13th fret on the first string. You're playing those together. Moving down to the 12th fret here on this first string, 13th and the second. Again, you're playing those together. Then we're, what I'm doing is barring this 10th fret here across the same two strings. So what we're outlining here is a 4-5-6 in the key of F minor. So we have a D flat up to an E flat up to an F. So, so it's, it's a wee bit tricky to wrap your head around because the, the bass is playing some really quite nice inversions here. So rather than it just being a simple kind of root position or power chord where... It's the same chords as these just voiced differently. So what we've got essentially here are the third and the fifth of the first chord, which I'm just going to play the full triad. If we're doing a root position, it'd be like that, a D flat. We're then moving to an E flat, so if we had it in root position, it'd be here. But what we're just doing is taking these two notes here, the root and the third, uh, playing them here. Right? And then when we're going to the F, this is probably a bit easier to see. If you imagine an F power chord like this, where we've got the root, the fifth, and the root again. We're just missing out that and playing this here. A nice kind of little fourth dyad, you'd call that. So you have this really nice... We repeat that. Then it sounds like she slides all the way up to here. Which again is that D flat, so we've got the same chord. Then things change for the next chord. We're then playing an E. And there's a few ways to interpret this next chord. You could think of it as an E diminished, so that'd be an E, a G, and a B flat, which, you know, makes perfect sense. You could think of it as a C slash E, or maybe more aptly, a C7 slash E. The reason you could think of it as a C7 is because a C7 and an E diminished chord, are, they're essentially the same chord. If you have a C7, you've got a C, an E, a G, and a B flat. And as we just found out, and you can probably see from my fingers here, the E diminished chord is the E, the G, and the B flat. The only difference is that there's a C in there. Right? Or. And it, it doesn't really matter too much which way you want to think of it, because they, they both function the same way, which is to pull us to home, which is the, the, the F minor chord. And that's exactly what we're playing in the bass here. We've got an F. Going down to a more bass, uh, a common bass register, we're playing the same chord we started off with, it's D flat, and you're just going straight eighth notes for two bars. Then on the last beat of that bar, the and of four is here, one, add two, add three, add four, add one, add two, add three, add four, add, and that last and, you're up a tone to the E flat, where we're going to play that straight for a bar. Then you have that really cool syncopation, that unison. Uh, so that bit. Cool, I'll just go through the progression one slowly and hopefully that will clear everything up. So we've got this, down to here, then the F, repeat that whole section. We're going to slide up on the uh, third string. To this fret here, the 16th fret, you're just going to pick that, straight, straight notes, up to here, the 14th fret, the second string, again for a bar, then up to here, slide down and out of that, so those last two ones, you got the 4th fret on the 3rd string, and the 6th fret on the 3rd string.
breakdown of what's going on with the guitar there, we start off with this power chord here, this D flat, so you've got the 4th fret on the A, 6th fret on the D, and like I said we're doing the palm muting, so if you have it like unpalm muted if you want to call it that, if you're just playing it open like that, you're bringing some of your palm against the string so you get this muted sound. If you bring it closer it gets really choked out, so there's always a sweet spot in terms of where your hand is here and also how much pressure you apply if you put it too much. It's really chubby, not enough still quite loose. So you have that. All, all down is quite difficult to get. So by all downs I mean you're doing down strums to keep it tight. You could up and down if you want, uh, if you want that aggression. Uh, the Metallica way of doing things, doing all downs. So you got that. And then the chord progression has changed here from the D flat E flat. Then we're up to the next chord, which I think is probably an E diminished. Uh, the way I think this is being voiced on the guitar to, to keep things kind of consonant is playing the E here and the G here. So that's the seventh fret on the A, fifth fret on the D. The other note, of course, is this is B flat. So if you had it with these two, you get quite a lot of tension. If you play all of them together, not only is it a stretch, it's a pretty tense chord. You could play these two, and that would be all right. But it's a bit of a jump from this one maybe sounds a bit more uh, kind of melodic because it's just, it's kind of it's almost like a technique that you call voice leading where you kind of try to move as, as, as little as possible you get on keyboard is a lot more common than guitar but i think that's the voicing being used for that card so you got up to what i think is just a standard f power chord so there you've got the eighth fret on the a tenth fret on the d and again you have the palm muting here you maybe want to let off the palm muting a little bit on this chord uh, to kind of build the dynamics a bit so you have something like ease off the palm muting a tiny bit then when we go down to the d flat we're just full on strumming No, uh, no muting at all, so you're strumming for two bars. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And then just like the bass on this, and a four, we're up to an E flat, where we strum it straight for a bar, so you got one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and add. And then we come to the cool syncopated bit. So I'll do that full thing slowly. just to consolidate everything, wrap it up and put a bow on it. The chord progression we have, even when it's just the bass, let's go through it. You have the D flat, to an E flat, to an F minor. You have the same thing again. When the guitar comes in, we're still starting off with this D flat. Then we go to that E diminished, which really wants to go somewhere where it wants to resolve to, again, is this F minor. Then we're back to the D flat, two bars. And we've got that kind of anticipated thing where we jump to the, the E flat on the fourth beat of the bar. And then it's an E flat again over those nice kind of cool unison stabs. If you want to see more of this through the old subscribe and enable notifications thing, you can check out more of these reaction kind of critique videos to the playlist there, or more guitar stuff up there. But take it easy guys, have a good one.